This week on Chasing the Sun, we celebrate a Gulf Coast crustacean with a local restaurateur. Stone crabbing is uh, basically just uh, reaching into a black hole and hoping there might be a crab in there. It's, uh, it's not for the faint of heart. It can be a little intimidating. And their crusty claw is where they get their name, stone crab. And so imagine what they can do to your fingers. That yeah, bit. A little one too. A little one's the worst. One in the bag. First claw of the season. That's probably one of the best things to eat on this planet. Then we learn how two pros tackle bay waters a day after a heavy front. Full moon. You just got a gazillion gallons of water, fresh water dumped in here. We got howling wind. I go, what kind of fishing are we gonna have? You can't win if you don't enter. That's cool. Nice to feel the thump. That's as good as it gets. to you by visit Panama City Beach. AFCO, American Fishing Tackle Company. Yozuri, fish the best. Costa Del Mar, see what's out there. Highs Toggery, premium clothing for men and women. And by Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. Fall is a beautiful time in the Panhandle. Summer's humidity is headed out with the beach crowd, leaving just the warmth of sun and a bay full of the tasty crustaceans to find. Today's opening day stone crabs in Florida. And it's always one of the best days of the year, October 15th, because uh, stone crabs probably some of the best meat in the world. Justin Buxton is a restaurant owner who is passionate about keeping it fresh and stone crabbing fuels that passion. Stone crabbing is a, a seasonal thing. It takes place, season opens October 15th, and it runs through the winter for the brave of heart, and it goes all the way until May 15th. And uh, it's basically just, uh, you know, reaching into a black hole and hoping there might be a crab in there. I started stone crabbing about 12 years ago, I guess. Uh, it was me and a bunch of buddies went out, and uh, it was, it was literally one friend showing three other friends how to do it. And we got out there and uh, let's just say out of the three people that showed, the other two guys still won't touch it. So it's, uh, it's not for the faint of heart. It can be a little intimidating. Um, when they lock down, they, they have a little bit of pressure in the beginning, but then it gets worse, and harder and harder. Like a vice harder. grip. And the only way to get it off is to break the claw off. And the problem when it bites you, <laughs> I'm sure you can attest, it never bites you where you want it to, to be able to break its claw off. The next yeah. thing you know, it's got the back of your hand and you're, you know. <laughs> And they got two claws. Yeah, there's, so there's can, another one too. They have a uh, crusher and they have uh, like a, a cutter claw. And their crushing claw is where they get their name, stone crab, and they can, uh, they can crush oyster shells, you know, sea urchins, you name it, clams. They can, uh, they can crush it. So imagine what they can do to your fingers. I got bent. There's a little one too. A little ones are the worst. Ah! Oh my god, that hurt. That's why there's not a whole lot of stone crabbers. Ah. Feels like your finger gets slammed in a car door. I think I went like two or three trips without getting pinched when I first started. But when I finally got pinched, you know. <laughs> It hurt for months. I mean, it was a bad, bad experience. It's one of those things where, you know, you really got to have confidence in yourself, and you got to be fast, and you got to know what you're looking for. We usually hit it when the season first opens. A lot of people hit it then. But you can go through the whole entire season 
And so you have these spots and you uh, look for certain uh, times of the year, depending on the water temperature, depending on the tidal flow that's coming in. Um, they'll be in different depths, you know. They'll be around sometimes oyster beds, grass flats, uh, any kind of ledge. And so depending on where you live, um, a lot of, around here it's a lot more sandbars or, or grass flats. For instance, on a uh, oyster bed, you're almost going to see dark spots because underneath the oysters is mud. So you almost look for dark spots. On a, in a clear water, on, on the grass, sand flats, you're going to look for white spots. But uh, if you find a crab, there's a certain way to take a claw, and uh, they're probably one of the best things to eat on this planet. That's the reason I do it, man. It's, uh, I, don't think, I think they're like 30 bucks a pound, and it costs us basically a six pack of beer and a half pack of gas to go out there, you know, and you're eating like kings by the end of the day. Right. Coming up on Chasing the Sun. We're gonna start looking for some stone crab holes. You can kind of visibly see where they're at. Well, there's oh. one behind us that looks pretty good. When you get those big ones, there's, there's, everybody has nicknames for them, you know, like Grandpapa. That's a keeper. Oh. Usually they're one of the big claws sticking out, and uh, you just reach in as quick as you can and try to grab that crab before we get to you. White sand in your toes, smell the sea in your nose, touch the earth yet glows, sunsets are pretty shows. White sands, turquoise waters, and endless possibilities. Plan your escape today at visitpanamacitybeach.com. Reel down to the water until it's rip and drag. Inside you, there's an outside you. A you that takes the road less traveled than the road less traveled. And finds the comforts of home extremely uncomfortable. This is for that you. Beautiful. Best selection, best service, best advice. For 43 years, Half Hitch has given anglers everything they need for a successful day of blue water fishing or fishing the shallow flats of the Florida Panhandle. With six locations along the Emerald Coast, a Half Hitch is never far away. For your latest fishing reports, check out halfhitch.com. Half Hitch, gear up and get out there. We wanted to go where others couldn't. To fish where the fishing is best. We needed an adventure that we couldn't have any other way. If you're a fisherman, you know what we're talking about. So today is a, one of our favorite days of the year. It's opening day stone crab season. So uh, we're gonna hopefully get lucky. The water's clear and we're gonna start looking for some stone crab holes. You can kind of visibly see where they're at. There's one behind us that looks pretty good. It looks pretty big. It's right behind us. Now there'll just be one crab in there? Yeah, one, yeah. Every now and then there's two. It's rare. It's rare. Sometimes you stick your hand in though. And blue crabs in there. <laughs> blue crabs in there, and they're a lot quicker than a stone crab. The thing about the stone crab is it, it's sideways. So when you reach your arm in there, I mean, you feel it. I mean, you you know the difference. Usually they're one of the big claws sticking out, and uh, you just reach in as quick as you can and try to grab that crab before we get to you. And if the claw is big enough, they got to be uh, two and three quarter inches. Um, we just measure them on our finger, 
claw's gotta be about that big from the tip of the claw to the first knuckle. And if it's big enough, you can take it. So that's a keeper. On what side? So we'll snap it off just a certain way so you don't harm the crab. We uh, put the crab right back in the hole. And the beauty about it is it lives. It grows another claw back, so it's a renewable food source. Getting pinched is only one of the hazards of stone crabbing. Floating into a boater's path while scanning the grass flats for crab sign is a real threat if you're not paying attention. When you're underwater, you can usually hear a boat um, as it gets close, but they have the rental pontoons and uh, people just not paying attention, so you have to have a dive flag up. Um, but still, even then, people don't know. I don't even think they even saw me. You know, they're, they're out here from uh, on vacation and uh, you really got to be careful. One in the bag. First claw of the season. It's the most bang for your buck if you're if you're into crabbing. You know, if you go blue crabbing, you got to catch so many of them, and it's so much work. And mm -hmm. and uh, when you get to stone crab, you know, you just you got these big juicy claws, you know, and you just you can make a meal out of three or four of them. When you get those big ones, there's there's everybody has nicknames for them, you know, like Grandpapa, you know, or uh, uh, you know, do you have any nicknames? The Granddaddies. And usually you get it and you come out the water with it, you know, you just hold it up. Pretty good crab. When they're this big, you can take both claws. Everybody has their own theory, but they're very, they're territorial. So if another crab goes in its hole, they fight. And a lot of times they fight to the death or they retreat. So if you take both claws, that crab can't fight. So usually it runs. So I think it has a better chance of growing back its claws and they grow back at the same time, both claws. If you take one, a crab gets in a fight with a crab with two, who's gonna win, you know? Look at these two claws. That's, an, that's probably not a legal claw, no, it's a little smaller. That's his legal claw. See the size, I put it right in the, to measure it from here to here, the longest part of the claw. The longest part of the big section of the claw. And that, that big claw is a crushing claw. What you wanna take, you wanna take this knuckle, this knuckle, and this knuckle. And you wanna do it gently so that, you know, you don't pull his guts out. Like that. It cracks off. If you pull the socket out, you pull that socket out, it'll kill die. the crab. And he'll grow that crab, he'll grow this claw back, I think, before winter. Yeah. And then that one will be legal to keep. It takes about a year or so for him to regenerate, and you can go back, you might catch the same crab two years later and get another meal off of him. Yeah. I mean, what, what can you do that with any other animal? That's. That's what you call supper. That'll feed a family of two. Coming up on Chasing the Sun. People will always ask what 580 means because it truly is uh, something that is scientific. That number is a sweet spot on the visual light spectrum where we can block out glare where no one else can. I've been doing this for a long time. I've had my business for about 26 years. I was shocked. You can find some hidden water here almost anywhere you go. And that's pretty cool, nice diversity. Good places to hide out of the wind and good fish. 
High Stoggery is the oldest family-owned clothing store in Bay County. Founded by High Waste Team in 1969 and still providing the best customer service. High Stoggery is now 9,000 square feet of the best brands for all your work, play, social, or sporting requirements. Select from a huge assortment of Columbia, Guy Harvey, AFCO, Costa Del Mar, Yeti, Vineyard Vines, Ferry Top Cider, and more. Visit us at our Pier Park location on Panama City Beach to see the latest in men's and women's apparel. Or give us a call, 850-235-1177. This is why we are obsessed. On the Uzuri, baby! It's the Mag Darter, man! The Crystal 3D Shrimp. Here we go! There he is! Big Bull! Big Bull! Love that popper in the side of his mouth. Look at oh, this fish. Crush that Yozuri. You know, I'm a huge believer in this Yozuri paint. I'm telling you, this is the fluorocarbon of all fluorocarbon. Skipping across the surface at Yozuri. There he is! Nice bite! Oh my gosh! Look at him! Yeah, baby, Yozuri! I don't go fishing without it. This is the new Beastmaster 9000. <laughs> this is hard work. More power, better durability, and heat dissipation. Oh, tripled up! Incredible winding speed. An amazing 250 pounds of max winding power. It's the ultimate toy. And with the new planetary gear system, that equals durability. Incredible winding speed. Yeah, that's a giant. 55 pounds of drag. The Beastmaster 9000 is now a part of my fishing arsenal. Hi, I'm Josh Wakestein. I'm here with our coaster rep, Ali Benton, and we're going to talk a little bit today about how to pick the perfect pair of coasters for you. Uh, some factors you need to know is what activities you're looking to do, uh, a little bit about how you like them to fit, and your head size. So, Ali, next week I'm going fishing with some friends. We're going inshore fishing. We're going to try and catch a few redfish. What coasters would you recommend for me? Well, Costa has 70 plus frames to choose from in all different shapes and sizes, uh, different color frames and lenses, which is all a part of finding the best fit for you. Um, that being said, if you're looking for an extra large fit, um, here I have the black fin. Um, tortoise is a nice uh, everyday color that you can use, um, but the green lens is what is really the most important here. This green lens has a copper base, which is really going to um, make things pop in the water, show you contrast, show you those red fish where you, where if you had a non-polarized lens without this 580 technology, you probably couldn't see. People always ask what 580 means because it truly is uh, something that is scientific. That number is a sweet spot on the visual light spectrum where we can block out glare where no one else can. Also includes us blocking out the UVA, UVB, and HEV harmful light. Um, and what that really means is just like you're supposed to put sunscreen on your skin, it's just as important to protect your eyes and there's no better lens to put on your eyes to protect them that blocks out glare and enhances colors and clarity and contrast like no other lens can. Captain Brad Benton, he's a Costa Pro staff and an angler here in the area. And we wanted to talk to Brad a little bit about what benefits Costa sunglasses offer him as a piece of his fishing equipment and what glasses he uses in what conditions. Brad, what would you say is your go-to color lens with Costa? An everyday lens, I would have to go with a copper base, maybe a green lens. Um, getting specific, if we go offshore in blue water, I would much rather have a blue mirrored lens, but most, most of the time we'll be either in the murkier water in the shallows okay. or in the bay, and for that, definitely the copper is better. I like a green mirror. There's a reason they call these bull reds. So if you're here visiting in Panama City Beach, be sure to come to Pier Park and check out the local dealer, High's Toggery. They've got the largest selection of apparel, eyewear, and accessories of Costa on the beach. How you doing? I'm Nathan Chenot, Panama City Beach Fish of the Day with, uh, he needs no introduction, but anyway, this is Mr. Mark Nichols with Billy DOA Bob. Lures. Billy Bob. Billy Bob, <laughs> as we like to call him on the boat. 
And uh, as you can see, we're out here doing a little bit of rig fishing today. And uh, we're going to be using a variety of DOA lures. Uh, this right here happens to be a three inch shad tail, which uh, for the type of fishing we're doing right now is about perfect. It, it mimics the size base that we've got over here right now. And uh, you know, it's all good. All there, that's right, it's all there is to it is fishing. You know, how hard can it be? Nathan's uh, showing me how. I've been doing this for a long time. I've had my business for about 26 years. All the times when I can come up into the panhandle, it's always some of the best because it's some of the most relaxed, number one, and some of the most beautiful water. If I'm gonna talk about fishing, then some of the most beautiful water I could find anywhere is up here. They go, water goes with the beaches here. The beaches are beautiful and the water's gorgeous too. Uh, you can sight cast redfish and some quality redfish and some skinny water. Tons of trout around. Uh, great for a uh, novice as well as somebody who wants to really side cast some really quality fish and, and catch them and watch them eat. So you've got so much diversity and you also have miles of shoreline. I fished with the young man Nathan before and uh, came up and jumped in his boat again today and uh, I'm like going to myself, to be honest, I fish a lot. And uh, I'm going, full moon, you just got a gazillion gallons of water, fresh water dumped in here. We got howling winds. I'm going, what kind of fishing are we going to have? Hey, dude. You got them that time. Yeah, I uh -oh. did. Uh-oh, uh-oh, what you got? There's a little red fish. Red. We found some gin clear water. Nathan knows the water really well. This area right through here will have probably a foot of water in it, and it'll get up to about six inches in these little cuts right back here. Some of them, when you get farther back in there, the narrower they get, the deeper they tend to get. Sure. You know, they'll be two right. and a half foot or so, but trying to get in there, yeah. it's only a couple inches deep. I was shocked. You can find some hidden water here almost anywhere you go, and that's pretty cool, nice diversity. Good places to hide out of the wind and good fish. This is your basic Panama City Beach redfish. And uh, incredibly beautiful area. Gorgeous pine trees, oaks, everything else all around this little hidden jewel. Coming up on Chasing the Sun. When people fish a lot, then they start picking up on certain things. You know, usually when I find these redfish hanging out with these mullet, they're either below them or behind them. The coincidence of this is not a coincidence. So many times when I hook a fish, that puts a pulse in the water, and that pulse, I think, moves the baits, and that's when that other predator can strike the baits and have a chance to better, higher percentage of getting his food. waters and endless possibilities. Plan your spring escape today at visitpanamacitybeach.com. Visit Panama City Beach. Half Hitch Tackle. Get out there. Shimano. Focus your passion. Jackson Kayaks. Four Anglers by Anglers. Yeti Coolers. Built for the wild. And by AFCO, American Fishing Tackle Company. Nathan and I were fishing today. There's a lot of things that you, when people fish a lot, 
then they start picking up on certain things. We discussed two things today. One is, of course, if you're fishing around really big mullet, you're usually gonna find other predator fish with them. They don't wanna eat the mullet. They wanna eat what the mullet turns up. You know, usually when I find these redfish hanging out with these mullet, they're either below them or behind them. But, right. But over the last, there's some more wakes right there. Over well, the last couple, couple of weeks, like it seemed like the mullet were following redfish. There'd be two or three redfish in the lead. Uh -huh. you know, they'd be the first fish kind of suspended up in the water column, and then it would have a, a bunch of mullet behind them. We're casting into some of the thickest schools of mullet, and while we're doing that, we get a double. The coincidence of this is not a coincidence. So many times when I hook a fish, that puts a pulse in the water, and that pulse, I think, moves the baits, and that's when that other predator can strike the baits and have a chance to better, higher percentage of getting this food. Hi, Red. Good morning. How are you today? That's cool. Nice to feel the thump. Nine entry on top of the head makes this bait want to go down. That's a lead eye, so it always wants to rotate down, hold on the bottom, which is what these fish are looking for. Today when Nathan threw at a redfish and that redfish turned on that bait and we watched him turn right on the DOA and thump it and he saw him stick it. There you go. Good job. Excellent job. That's as good as it gets. Well, Captain, you took us out. It's blowing 25. It was raining this morning. We've got full moon conditions, and we still caught fish. Hey, Pretty yeah. awesome job. Hey, we, you know, we, job, we came out here and we grounded out, and uh, you know, hey, you, you can only do so much. Conditions are going to be where they are, and, you know, and despite what probably should have happened today, we made a pretty good day out of it, so. Hey, you know, it's a long drive for me to get here. Panama City Beach is a good haul, but it's so beautiful when you get here. It's, you know, it's like, I want to stay longer. I hear you well. You know, we appreciate you definitely hey, coming man. down and uh, sharing for, a boat with me. Thanks for being and, a host. You know, get real. You thanks for making some good lures. And play in my neighborhood sometime. Absolutely. For more information on your trip to Panama City Beach, go to visitpanamacitybeach.com or find us on Facebook and Instagram.